today we'll be making the Goliath bird wing butterfly. For this you're going to need a sort of lime green, an emerald green, black, yellow and a deep mustard colour. I'll be using Sculpey Primo for this. We're going to be using my standard tools of an acrylic roller, X-Acto knife, tissue blade and needle tool. Off screen I'm also using a pasta machine because I find it easier to do Skinner blends using one. First we're going to make the Skinner blend between the two greens. So you're going to need to roll out both your greens on the thickest setting on your pasta machine which is about 3 or 4 millimetres thick. Next you're going to cut a rectangle um, out of the emerald green and you're going to cut that in half so you end up with two triangles. Lay these two triangles on top of one another and then do the same on the other green so that you have a rectangle with one half dark green and one half light green. You can always make a Skinner blend using just the one layer of clay, that's absolutely fine, but you'll end up with a smaller amount of clay. I tend to make quite big butterfly canes, which is why I tend to double mine up, but using single layer will achieve exactly the same results, albeit on a smaller level. Once you've got your two sets of triangles, push them together along the long edge. Make sure they're really tight in there. I tend to use my two forefingers just to push the edges together so that I know that they're really neatly knitted together. And then you want to pop it through the pasta machine on the thicker setting or roll it out till it's about three, four millimeters thick. Next, fold the blend from top to bottom. Make sure you always fold it the same way and then put the folded edge through the pasta machine. You need to do this about 20 to 30 times to create a nice gradient. Then fold it so that it's sort of a 3 or 4 centimetre thickness all the way down. Then run it from the short edge through the pasta machine so that you get a really nice long tape. Do this on incrementing thin thinness um, and as soon as it's at a manageable thinness, not too thin, you can cut the tape in half so it's easy for you to manipulate and then cut three centimetre sections all the way down the tape, stacking the pieces from light to dark. If your polymer clay gets stuck to the surface that you're working on, you can use a tissue blade like I am um, to stop the clay from sticking. If you push it down into the surface and then just gently scrape underneath the polymer clay, it will lift quite easily and that way you don't distort the shape that you've just made with the tape and you can keep that lovely equality all the way through the slices. You can see here that the effect of the greens is quite subtle from one to the next. That's kind of what we want in the wing. We just want to give it a bit of interest in the colour. We don't want to create too much contrast. We want to add some more pale green, so roll out the remaining pale green that you've got and just add some to the bottom. I've rolled mine out on the thickest pasta machine setting and then we're then just cutting round the original stack um, just so that we've got more green to play with. I find the Skinner blends create quite a small gradient when you make them as a plug so sometimes it's very helpful to add the original colours on the top and the bottom so that you get a bigger gradient cane. Thank you. 
once you've got all the pieces stacked give it a really good work really push those layers together so we've got very few gaps and then you're going to take the clay on its end and cut it in half diagonally the shape of the green on the goliath birdwing butterfly is pretty kind of a flat triangle on both sides of the black on the top wing so that's what we're trying to achieve here so you want to shape both pieces so that they're sort of flat triangles so working with the piece that's going to go on the bottom of the top wing I'm just drawing on with a blunt needle tool the place where the veins are going to go and also where the spots are going to go inserting clay into another cane can be quite difficult but if you make sure that you make the gap all the way down the cane um, and make sure that that is the shape that you want the end result to be you should have quite a good time doing this you don't want to remove any clay out of the cane you just want to push it because if you if you take clay out of the cane you'll make it smaller and we don't want to do that we actually just want to build around it add more bits in and essentially make it a bit bigger so once you've made your gap you want to roll out a thin snake of black clay and just fill in the gap that you've made making sure to curl the bit of green above it just ever so slightly round on top of the black do the same for the next bit of black make sure you're really filling those gaps with the black clay because what will happen if you leave a gap and you reduce it it will distort the shape that you've made in the wing this next black dot has green all around it so I've elected to just stab the cane with my blunt needle tool all the way down and then just manipulate said needle tool until you get a nice gap you kind of want it not quite round but mostly round splodge shaped is probably the best I can say then you want to cut through said splodge shape make sure that it's all the way down the cane and then fill that in with black and carefully put the two pieces together again really really push that black clay into the gap otherwise again when you reduce it it will distort the shape so you really want to fill it in really push the clay the clay won't bite back I promise just really squish that clay in there Okay, so now we've done the spots, I'm going to do the veins. We're working on this wing very, very slowly because it is detailed in certain sections. So what you want to do here is cut through where you've marked the veins. They should basically be above and below each of the spots, apart from the top one, obviously, where there is no vein above it, there is one below it. I've rolled out some black on a three setting on my pasta machine I find that any thinner than that and it gets very difficult to work with but you could work with thinner if you'd like um, and then you want to make sure the vein is from the very tip of the wing to the very back of the wing I know we don't usually do that but because this part of the wing is surrounded by black um, it really does need the vein from the front to the back once all the veins are popped in, we are going to build up the black areas around the green wind using the sausage technique. So roll out a lot of black in some sausages and just start building up the black around the back of the cane. With this, uh, it sort of tapers from quite a thin part of black in the bottom corner to a progressively thicker part of black toward the top of the green. For an added effect, you can push in using a needle tool as I am here, the areas where the veins meet the black edge and push some more black clay in there. This will create a sort of curved edge from the green to the black. Okay. 
Next we need to use some fatter sausages because we're going to be making some shallower but wider gaps along the long edge of the green using our needle tool. This is part of the middle of the wing effectively but I don't want to have a straight edge so I make indentations into the green using my needle tool and then fill them up with fatter sausages and then we'll fill that progressively up with thin sausages. The reason I love what I've called the sausage technique is that it's really easy to slowly build your cane um, and allow yourself some control over where the clay is going to go because you're essentially building a picture up. If you're trying to build a picture with great lumps of clay, it's much harder to control. I struggle to control shape and size when I do it that way. So I much prefer using a sausage technique to build up the layers, the width and the heaviness of the colours. This black section of the wing, which goes between the two green bits, is sort of um, a flattened oval, if you like, quite thin toward the ends of the wing, but quite rounded in the middle. So all I'm doing here is using the sausage technique again, just to control where I'm putting the clay and make it so it sort of tapers from thin to fat to thin again. Now this bit was quite fiddly but I only did it because my reference picture had it. I haven't actually seen another photo of the butterfly with this bit of black in it but it sort of had a little flick of black from the middle section that would flick into the next green section so I sort of made two little lumps on top of the black clay to simulate that and we'll sort of fit it with the green later. If you need to, just adjust the second piece of green so that it's going to fit your wing and then you want to start drawing the veins on it. Now it's sort of got um, a really shallow sort of leaf design on the end of it. There aren't any veins on the inside of it so I'm just cutting with my X-Acto knife the shorter lines and then I will use the tissue blade to cut the longer lines. I curve them once they're cut generally now um, because I find it quite hard to cut curved lines with a tissue blade especially when I've got quite a thick cane. Um, so if you bend your um, blade like I've just done and you find that it doesn't come out with a curve sometimes you can just manipulate that piece of cane so that it is curved before you put the veins on. And here we're doing exactly what we did before, we're using clay that's gone through the pasta machine on a 3 setting just to fill in where the vein should be. A little note here, don't double layer the black anywhere, if it double layers just nick a bit off so that it's a nice smooth single layered line. fit it onto the main cane. This is where mine got a bit fiddly because remember I've got those two sticky out bits that I put on the black so I'm just making allowances for them using my needle tool, um, marking where they are first and then making really deeper grooves that sort of go back into the clay almost like a hook. It is a little bit fiddly but I quite liked the results. Push the second green bit onto the cane, really really push it down, don't be afraid. And then using a thick sheet of black that I've run through the pasta machine on the thicker setting, I'm just covering the green to about a third of the way down from the top and just trimming the edges as I go. Next I've rolled the black out on a thinner setting, this was on the 3 setting on my pasta machine and we're just going to continue down the line. Basically this black line is tapered, thicker from the back, thinner to the front. If 
using the remaining section of pale clay that you probably have left over you sort of want to create quite a thick layer which is why I haven't run it through the pasta machine um, that tapers from thin to thick to thin it's not quite as delicate enough for me to use a sausage technique on this particular bit because I do just kind of want a straight line and this is going to go at the top of the wing over the black section that you've just put onto the top nip off the tip and just pull it so that it's a bit thinner toward the top until it sort of reaches about three quarters of the way up the wing finally we're going to add another layer of black again on a three setting just over the whole new green bit that we've just put on the wing i really quite like this detail again i don't know if my reference was different to other butterflies but um, it had this little detail and I really loved it so I did it on my wing. I suppose this step is completely optional if you just want to keep it at the two um, green sections instead of having a third on the top. Now give it a really good push together, uh, a really nice shape and then that is the top wing complete. Next we're going to be working on the bottom wing. So roll out your yellow and your mustard colour on the thicker setting on your pasta machine. It's about 3-4 millimetres thick. Then cut your yellow into an oblong-ish shape and then cut diagonally, not from corner to corner leaving about a centimetre and a half of sort of lip on the top if you like. I believe they call it an irregular quadrilateral. I know, I learned something. We want to cut the mustard colour so that it fits the gap but this time we want it flush to the yellow because basically that lip is going to give us an extra bit of yellow to work with so hopefully we'll have just yellow at one end that hasn't been mixed and at the other end we'll have a mixture of the mustard and the yellow which is why we go all the way down to the corner so same as before push the two triangles together and when they're really a did pop them through the pasta machine on the thicker setting first then fold from top to bottom uh, repeatedly for about 20 to 30 turns until you get a nice gradient. Again we're making a tape so you want to fold it so it's about the same height all the way through and then pop it through the pasta machine on an increasingly thin setting. Here instead of cutting it into three centimeter sections I'm simply going to fold it in a sort of concertina style um, just fold one way then fold the other way and fold one way fold the other way there's no rhyme or reason for doing either. Sometimes I find the three centimeter one to be a bit slow and I get bored. <laughs> and sometimes it creates a really nice, um, almost scientific, really accurate gradient, which is nice. Um, but it's good to have both in your arsenal. As with the green block before, I'm going to be adding more of the lightest colour to the bottom of the block. So cut out some sections of yellow that have been put through the pasta machine on the thicker setting and build up the cane. What I love about clay is it's really forgiving. You can see that I've cut irregular pieces there and just stuck them on the bottom but still the clay looks fantastic, the gradient looks really nice. Polymer clay is such a forgiving medium, um, it's really really lovely. And also don't mind that spot on the, uh, on the top of the mustard clay there, it won't show on the cane, so it's fine. The next thing to do is really squeeze the cane together so that there are no gaps between the layers and then really push and pull from the middle the cane outwards so that you're lengthening the cane. You'll also be making the diameter of the, the cane smaller but you want to cut quite a few pieces out of this to make the bottom wing. While it's still relatively thick you want to cut the biggest part of the wing out so this is going to be sort of the middle section upon which all the other sections are going to touch. You want to make this into a teardrop where the lightest yellow is the point.
You can also use your tissue blade to shape the piece by just sort of shaving parts off. Don't be afraid to cut into the clay, it's absolutely fine. Just be really gentle with it and make sure that your blade is really, really sharp so you don't distort it. Now, unfortunately, my camera jumped on this bit, so I'm just gonna talk you through what's happened. Um, I've wrapped a roll of black in a thin sheet of lime green there, you can see, and then reduced it really thin. Three of the sections have this particular um, gap in them, so I've created a round hole using my needle tool and then cut through that gap and inserted the green and black cane. Then I've just popped the sections back where I've sort of shaped them um, to continue. I use my, I guess it was an old knitting needle, quite a lot to shape things. If you have something like a paintbrush handle or something, that is really good for it as well. Next we're adding green clay as the veins. I know, but seriously, go look at the picture, they are green. Um, the green has been rolled out on A3 setting on the pasta machine, so it's only about 2-3 millimetres thick. And I'm just popping it around the main, the biggest piece first and just gently trimming before I add it to the rest. Again, as with all veins, do not double stack them um, because you will create a really thick part and ideally the veins are all the same size all the way through the butterfly wing. So you ideally want to keep it the same. If you want to make them thinner, however, that's not a problem. I would not do it on the bottom wing on this one because the green isn't a huge contrast for the yellow but if you wanted to do it on the top wing to make the black appear more delicate then be my guest. I'm sure that would look really nice. Next we're going to roll out some more of the lime green clay um, and just to fill in the gaps between the segments that have been left. This is so when we pack the cane and reduce it later we don't lose the roundness of the shape that we've created. We don't want to flatten any of these sections so you just want to fill them in so that when you sort of roll it on its outer edge the yellow bits don't get flattened. Next apply a relatively thick layer of green that you've run through the pasta machine on a 1 or a 2 setting around the outer edge of the wing. This butterfly does have quite a thick area of green before it goes into black so I just wanted to build that up using sheets of clay at this point. Next we want to roll out some black clay. This bottom wing has a black section just on the inner wing so I'm using some fairly chunky sausages just to create that space. Again, sausage technique, best way to make a shape and control the size, especially as you're putting it directly onto the wing. build up that area, you don't really want to make it taper too much onto the bottom edge of the wing, you sort of want it to have its own little bump, so just try and keep that where you can. It's quite a thick section, you'll be surprised how thick it is, um, so just keep building until you're happy. Use a reference picture if you need. On the back edge of the wing, I use my needle tool just to create some indentations where the veins meet the edge of the wing and we're going to fill those in with little sausages of black. Thank you. 
Next I'm building up the areas of black using little sausages of clay. I'm sort of doing um, a sausage of clay in the middle where the gap is, then two on top of that either side and then one in the middle to sort of create a diamond. Then I rolled out a sheet of black on a three setting on my pasta machine, so it's about two, three millimeters thick. Um, and I'm just putting it around the edge of the wing. You sort of want it to cover from almost the tippity tip of the wing all the way around to the black area. Really push it on and give it a good trim. Now give your cane a really good shape, really push all that clay together, really roll the edge on the on whatever surface you've got so you get a really nice curve. And then take your hands and give yourself a pat on the back because you have just finished the Goliath Birdwing Butterfly Cane and what a beauty it is. Thank you so much for being on this little journey with me and thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Happy claying!